And welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal with your Friday afternoon MEM show. And this is the show where we bring you where the action is in the broader markets and some newer developments this week. Uh, lots that we can talk about, certainly, given last week's price action, the NASDAQ certainly springing to life. As usual, all of this today's show is designed to help prepare you not only for next week, and beyond. So let's jump right in, take a look at what we are going to be covering here today. As usual, we are going to go ahead and take a look at those broader markets and see where we closed the week after this week's rally. Also, we will take a look at some of those top headline news that drove price action for the week and then where we are seeing outperformance. And then, of course, as always, why? And the purpose there is to provide that confidence so that you can know if the move into a particular area is sustainable so that you can participate. So here we are with those headline news this week. We did get news earlier in the week that drove technology stocks into an uptrend. And we'll examine that closely and precisely where. From there, we will take a look at those mega cap bang stocks. They are certainly outperforming the broader markets. And we did get some information relating to manufacturing and service PMI report. It did come in week for January, indicating that manufacturing area of the economy is weakening a bit. Of course, we're in that phase where bad news economically is good news for the markets because this is what the Federal Reserve is on the lookout for so that we can tame elevated inflation levels. We did receive GDP numbers for fourth quarter, and it came in rather strong at 2.2%. And that's going to be that first estimate for fourth quarter GDP. As the months progress, we will get more refined with that number. But overall, we did see the number coming in a little bit stronger than anticipated yesterday. However, core CPE, that's that consumer price expenditure number, and it rose 0.1%, so a little bit lighter, and that's certainly good news. Initially, the markets today were a little uncertain on how to really uh, reconcile with that number, but in the end, we are seeing another rally day today. Next week, all important, that Federal Reserve meeting, FOMC meeting, and then on Wednesday, Fed Chair Powell will have his news conference, and this in the past has been quite impactful. Of course, investors are looking for a 0.25% rate increase, so anything beyond that or could rattle the markets. And then also next week, we will receive consumer confidence numbers, the consumer they are continuing to come in fairly strong with spending. And then also weekly as well as monthly employment reports are due on Friday. We'll get that monthly number. Another important key metric for the Federal Reserve as he, uh, Fed Chair Powell, is on the lookout to reduce employment, certainly to get that those employment numbers down so that spending in turn will be reduced and of course trickle down to lower inflation. So that's what's up next week. However, let's go ahead and dig in, take a look at where we close the markets this week. And here we are, a daily price chart of the S&P 500. I will note that today's show is being recorded about an hour before the close, not anticipating a big shift, but let's take a look at where we are at this point in time on a daily chart of the S&P 500. You can see that we have risen above each of these moving averages. I have a 10, 21, 50, and 200 day. So quite bullish there. Another metric that has been widely anticipated and really been looked at very closely is a move above 4,000 for the S&P 500. That was that big area of upside resistance. At this point, we are poised to close at 4,075. So net-net continued positive price action, and we can see our outside momentum indicators. This is your RSI up here above 50, trending higher, and then faster moving stochastics also in positive territory. So all systems 
go for the most part, but do bear in mind that next week we will have that, again, very impactful Federal Reserve meeting and Fed Chair Powell's notes. And uh, we will be closely on the lookout for as it relates to comments going forward for the remainder of this year, interest rates, and so on. Let's take a look also here at the NASDAQ top performing index up 4.6% as of now, and lots of bullish signals here. We can see the NASDAQ has closed or is poised to close above this 200-day simple moving average, and that's quite constructive. I'll show you a longer-term view of the NASDAQ, and you'll see the relevance there. Also, our outside momentum indicators in positive territory, both stochastics and your RSI. And we also got very nice high volume on the rally days this week. And that's what you want to see indicating accumulation. So let's go ahead and take a look at a weekly chart here of the NASDAQ. And you'll see taking us back to that peak back here at the end of 2021, we've had several rally attempts. This is your 40 week 200 day simple moving average. And you can see that the index has been denied at that level, but we have this week broken above. And then on that weekly view, another item that you want to pay attention to are these momentum indicators. Your weekly chart will have a longer term outlook ability. So we can see that the RSI is dipping into positive territory on that weekly, which is constructive for a longer term view. However, from my work, I will need to see a little more in the way of a continuation rally. The MACD down here at the bottom trending upward, not quite up here in positive territory. If we go back to coming out of this 20 20 bear. The weekly chart is certainly going to be a little bit later. We did have that nice uh, downtrend reversal take shape in the first quarter of 2020. It wasn't until that second quarter that we did get that MACD crossover into positive territory, but it certainly was a good indication of a longer term uptrend. So still have a little bit of work to do there. So let's drill down a little bit further. What I do want to share with you is a view year to date. So we're coming into the end of January, first month, of course. And we can see as it relates to the underlying 11 sectors, top performing areas are communication services, consumer discretionary, and technology all up double digit. The relevance here is uh, if we look at the S&P performance for 2022, these three areas were in the lower quartile down as much as 34% for XLC. And those are the areas that are seeing the most traction. But equally important is the fact that these are growth areas. So we have definitely seen, this is something I reviewed from the very beginning of this year in my MEM Edge twice weekly report, is the fact that there was a very pronounced move into growth and out of these more staid and defensive areas such as healthcare, staples, and utilities. So let's go ahead and move on and take a look at a shorter term view of these underlying sectors. Let's see if I can get over here. And we are going to look at a two-month daily price chart view of the 11 sectors. I've added that relative strength indicator. I'm going to go ahead and update that. What we want to be on the lookout for are two items. One is where is that relative strength currently taking shape in the markets? That's going to be these sectors up here in this quartile. And then those weaker areas, make sure you're not currently over weight it in these more defensive areas. And then also on the lookout for rotation as groups move from these weaker areas up to the forefront, and then likewise from strength down to the weaker areas. So I will share with you a couple of items of note. We already talked about the outperformance in these three growth areas. And I'm going to share with you a view of that technology chart. That's what I talked about in those news items from this past week. And take a look, technology up here above this 200-day simple moving average for the week, and then your outside momentum indicators in positive territory. 
Tech was not the top performer, however. Top performer for this week is consumer discretionary, and we're just on the cusp of reversing this very lengthy downtrend. Of course, a lot of that help, a lot of that coming from Tesla up 33% for the week. And Amazon has outpaced the market as well. Both stocks are very heavily weighted in this XLY consumer discretionary space. So as we move forward, we are starting to see a little more vibrancy. XLF had been down in this lower right quartile. It is beginning to inch up. We're getting super mixed results from these large bank names and then even the regional banks. I'll get into that in this next segment. But it is nice to see financials breaking out of this nice two-month base here with positive momentum. So we, that is something you want to see. Generally, when we officially come out of a bear market, those financial stocks, particularly banks, will lead you out. That indicates uh, in the ability for increased lending and so forth. So from here, we're going to take it down a little bit further, drill down behind these sectors and take a look at other areas. And in particular, uh, let's see, what I will do is go ahead and build this out and share with you how you can do that because I do not have it prepared. So what we will be doing is taking a look at that uh, candle glance view and it is automatically populated for you. But I have a list that I like to use that I find to be super helpful relative to identifying where the markets are, what we can anticipate going forward based on what we are seeing. And then a lot of the metrics that I use are very heavily growth oriented. That is generally a focus. If there's no vibrancy and growth, of course, I will move beyond that. So what I'm doing here is populating this daily, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, two-month daily price chart view of these underlying areas using these ETFs that I find to be super helpful. I'm going to go ahead and add that RSI here and again in descending order. Uh, let's go ahead over to here because I did put an incorrect ticker symbol and we're going to update that. Uh, let's see, IBB is what I want us to take a look at because this is the biotech space. We're seeing some vibrancy there that I do want to share with you. So that RSI descending order and here we are. Um, again, I did use these ETFs and I talked about technology reversing its downtrend. Let's take a look at one of the strongest areas. It was strong last week as well if you watched my show. This is Semiconductors, S-O-X-X ups over 6%. I'll share with you why. And also in, well, I can tell you now, it has a lot to do with not only earnings reports that are coming out, but also bullish sentiment among Wall Street for the second half of this year. It's not every semiconductor stock. It's a very refined select area. I wrote about it in my last Sunday MEM Edge report, and we are going to elaborate upon that again this week. So be sure and use that link below. You can trial that twice weekly report for $7 for four weeks. So I would urge you to do that because there are definite haves and have nots, not just in semiconductors, but elsewhere that you will want to be able to make that differentiation so that you can participate in that strong area. One other tech area I do want to definitely share with you, and that is software stocks. This is IGV, the ETF for software stocks. Super exciting. I've been on the lookout for this for quite some time. That is a move of this ETF above that 200-day simple moving average. We have positive outside momentum indicators. Now, I will say semiconductors are only about 103 publicly traded companies. Much easier to get your arms around that. Software, there are over 330 publicly traded software stocks. But this area also has a differentiator as it relates to one particular area among software that is out performing. And I look forward to sharing that with you. So IGV, SOXX, two very strong areas within semiconductor. I talked about consumer discretionaries being on the move. And here we are, XRT. This is the S&P 500 retail ETF. You can see it's continuing to progress higher. And this particular ETF is primarily online retailers. It's a fairly equal, equally weighted uh, ETF as 
as well. So a nice upward move here in these retailers. We're not seeing a whole lot of companies report, but I will share with you one standout in that XRT that is uh, helping to move that group higher. Gold is up here, but as you may recall, last Friday, it was up here as the top performing. So we have seen the NASDAQ software and semiconductors move to the forefront and push gold down, certainly still in the upper quartile and an outperformer, but not as strong as of late. Makes perfect sense. We've had this huge move. So we're in a nice period of consolidation from this over bought condition here, that RSI above 70. Take a look at this MACD, this crossover. Now, if we get that black line down through the red, it is not a sell signal. It's very simply telling you that the super strong uptrend could be in for a continued period of consolidation. And then as we move down here further, volatility is continuing to decline. We're down here at that 18. This, of course, is that Fear index. So keeping a close eye on this simply because historically, when that VIX gets down here super low, we have had volatility pick up, which in turn has propelled uh, the markets into a pullback. So keeping a little bit of an eye on that. And that is a very good view. One last area we can take a look at the US dollar. This declining dollar has been very bullish backdrop for the markets. It is stabilizing. This is another area that I'm going to be, I do keep a very close eye on, as well as the yield on that 10 year. We are seeing a little bit of stabilization, a potential uptick. Of course, next Wednesday's FOMC meeting is going to be very telling relating to interest rates. Rising interest rates are not good for growth stocks, particularly software. So kind of on the precipice there with a lot of these different areas. So let's go ahead, move on. I talked about these bang stocks. This is the second week, actually at least the second week of pure outperformance among these mega cap growth stocks. And that is really what is helping buoy the markets, their heavy weight and they are on the move higher. So I'm just going to add that RSI descending order among these seven stocks and take a look. Meta was one of the first names to really advance into an uptrend back here, certainly at the beginning of this year, but it began it back in November. The company did come out all about reducing their employment employee count and cutting cost elsewhere. That's what the markets wanted to hear. So we've seen a really impressive rally in meta platforms. Tesla for this week, they came out with earnings earlier in the week. Musk coming out with super bullish comments regarding growth prospects this year. Markets like what they heard, and you can see this big, sharp rally. I would also argue that there was a bit in the way of short covering. Tesla looked to be down and out, but a very substantial reversal taking place here in Tesla. And that's another big driver last week is earnings. I'm going to see how we are on time, but I'm going to share with you the relevance of earnings and how impactful it is as it relates to the spreading out of movement of stocks within that given group with when you see earnings. Netflix, that was a big driver here on this gap up and continuation rally, all about increased subscribership. So earnings have been the primary driver of these bigger movers in the markets. And then moving along here, we can take a look. Uh, this is Alphabet. Surprising rally in the sense they had this pullback midweek due to a lawsuit. I'd have to do a little more work over the weekend to get into that a bit more, but the stock has bounced off that 10-day simple moving average and in an uptrend. So by and large, these big mega cap growth names are on the move. This is your stronger areas. And then down here into your weaker areas, Microsoft came out with weak numbers this week. You can see it pulled back and it's recovering, but not as healthy looking as some of these other mega cap names. So from here, let's go ahead. I do want to share with you, I talked about earnings as that driver. Any given day this week, I'm going to take us back to this uh, initial interface page here on stockcharts.com, and they have this nice view with the top 10 movers to the upside on the S&P 500, and 
yesterday, I can tell you uh, today it's being represented as well. Most of these names that are up are going to be on earnings. Pretty much every name yesterday, not a little bit spread out today because Tesla already reported earlier. But let's take a look at a stock and I'll share with you uh, what has taken shape since then. This is American Express AXP and they came out with strong numbers gap up into a base breakout. And if you've watched my show, you'll know that is one of the strongest uh, base formations. It's not as attractive, a lot of choppiness going into today's report. But from here, I will share with you a couple of other stocks that are in the payment processing area. I talked about consumers continuing to open their wallet despite high inflation. So when you see a stock such as AXP, we can look, here's another uh, payment processor that reported this week, and that is Visa. I'm going to suggest that is an odd print, but we can see this gap up on earnings and the stock coming out of this flat base. And from here, we can take a look at a couple of smaller payment processors, but this is what you will generally see when you have these mega cap names or really any name that comes in with earnings, you'll see a uh, rally in other names that are in that area. This is Square, actually Block is the name, SQ is the ticker symbol, and we can see it's breaking out. I'll take a second here to mark this up, breaking out of a nice lengthy base. And they are, of course, a preferred uh, payment processor among uh, retailers or really among a lot of these smaller companies that uh, need these payment processing systems. So we can see this nice lengthy base breakout taking place this week, nice high volume. We've now broken above all these moving averages. Of note, it is now a bit overbought, but for the most part, uh, the stock is now in a very nice uptrend that longer that base uh, breakout, the longer the move out of that breakout. Let's take a look at one other name that is also in that payment processing area, and that is Shift for Payments, F-O-U-R, in a very nice confirmed uptrend. Another area that we did see uh, as it relates to earnings reports coming in quite strong, and hence in technology, exhibiting a nice turnaround here. This is Seagate Technology, STX. They came out with strong numbers yesterday, and take a look, huge volume, a move above that 200-day simple moving average. This stock is also overbought, but certainly of note, because from there, you will see other stocks in that group. This is Western Digital WDC. The company is due to report earnings next Tuesday, but we are seeing a nice rally into earnings, which is something that we are seeing universally this earnings season. Uh, prior to companies coming out with reports, well, another area that did report strong earnings this week are some of these steel stocks. This is Steel Dynamics. Take a look at that gap up into a base breakout, super high volume, MACD still down here at a low level. So I look for further potential upside there. Also, Nucor came out with strong numbers, gap up. We'll see if we'll have a continuation rally. And then one last stock I'll share with you in that metals space is a turnaround. We did see Tesla and in response to that, a number of other electric vehicle stocks rallying. Let's take a look at LIT. It's a pretty sharp V-shaped recovery, but this is lithium, one of the major components of those uh, batteries for those electric vehicles. And you can see that it's now broken above resistance. I will leave it at that. Everyone have a fantastic weekend, and I'm going to look for you again here next Friday. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.